Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Today's topic is about how we can use a geolocated OS DWG file on the left there to set up on the right our Revit model with correct global coordinates. Some people consider this an advanced topic, but for me, if you follow closely all the steps in this tutorial, it will be super easy and straightforward. So, let's see the end result we'll be going for. In Revit, you have this DWG OS map linked in. This is basically a survey map that is geolocated. And I have set it up so you can choose between the two ways to see your plan view. You can see it in true north orientation, or you can do project north. At all times, the four cardinal directions, north, west, east, and south, will always be accurate, maybe for your sunlight analysis, like I'm having there, or just any other commands or workflows that require this project to be correctly geolocated. This also means that you have in here a set of accurately geolocated boundary lines for your site. If I now hide this OS just for a moment, you can see my property lines that have accurate dimensions and coordinates and also the corners of my size that are all having accurate north and east coordinates. The same goes for levels. If I now select and open this south elevation there, you can see my levels here. They are now referencing the internal coordinate system. That's why you have here a number like 0 and 4000, route nice numbers for you to work with. But if you for just for a moment change their reference to be shared datum. They are now showing the global coordinates and that's why you have here accurate elevations above sea level. All right, that's enough showing. Let's see how we can make this happen ourselves. I'm going to start now from the OS map in AutoCAD. For anyone outside the UK, the OS map simply is a survey DWG, a 2D one, that has correct global coordinates. So let's say if I go in here and want to check coordinates of any random points in this file, I can now run the id command and then just pick those random points, let's say this corner point of my site. And you can see on my cursor and also down here in the command prompt, it's now at this x, y and z coordinates. The z coordinates will be always zero in this file because it's a 2D one. But if you have an OS map that is 3D, then that should give you a real number as well. Now, before we reference this file into Revit and try to obtain coordinates from this file for our model, you need to ensure this file is clean. There are a few checks and fixes you need to do to ensure that's the case, and I have covered them in another video. Just check the link on your screen right now and see that one as well. For now, I will assume that you have cleaned up this file properly and it's now super optimal for Revit. We can now go there and make a new project. I will just close this one. So let's go to new. Choose a template of your choice. If you work in a company and they have their own template, make sure you use that from here as well. For now, I'll use architectural. And next step is to go to insert and link in our CAD file. That's the OS map file right there. I usually just bring this into a current view only because it's 2D and I want to see it in my other views or even in 3D. For the units, some people like to put this at auto detect, but for me that's not a good habit because at one time Revit may detect it well but some other time in the future, when you try to reload this file there, this may change itself to another value or another unit system. So always much safer to choose your own system at the get-go. I know the file is in meters, so I'm going to choose it there. For placement, because now in this file we haven't got any real coordinate setup, it's fine to do center to center. And you want to make sure also to uncheck this box here. This is usually to do with building plans in DWG that people want to bring into Revit. If there are lines that are slightly off axis, then it might be a good idea to let Revit correct those lines when you bring in the CAD file. 
But in a survey model or a survey DWG, those lines may be off axis on purpose. And that's why I always untick this for survey files. Let's now do open. And very quickly, we have it here centers in our view. Our site is there. And if you haven't heard it, there's a rule in Revit to say, always keep your site as close to the model origin point as possible. I'm going to show you where that point is. If we go quickly to visibility and graphics, under the site category, you have three points, the internal origin, the base point for the project, and the survey point. Let's see them all at the moment. So from the beginning, you will have all these points at the same location. Internal origin point is here as well. And that's why I want to make this site as close to this point as possible. At the moment, it's not that far away. This is for sure something that we can handle. But just to stay close to my rule, I will move this point or this always map so that it will stand there where the origin point of the model is also the center point of my site. If you now go and select this point there, it says the X, Y, and Z coordinates of it is still 0, 0, 0. That prompts me to go and the next step will be done from the Manage tab, Coordinates, Acquire Coordinates. Just click on Acquire Coordinates once and then try to select your DWG here. It's going to light up like this, easier to select now. And if you didn't see that, the survey point has moved away from here. I only see now here the internal origin point and the project base point. So where's the other one? If I now go and do a zoom to fit, it has moved itself all the way there. Because this point is supposed to be at 0, 0, 0. And now after I have acquired the coordinates from the DWG, that 0, 0 point is now here, miles away from my site. To uh, stop zooming to this far away, every time I do zoom to fit, let me go back to site and then turn off the survey point. We know it's there, that's good to know, but for now I don't want to see it. Zoom to fit again, and here we are. If I now go and select this point there, it has correct true global coordinates, as you can see, over here and also in the properties box. Next step is to set up our project north. I know it's nice to have everything rotated to true north like we have now, but when you go and draw maybe a, a rectangular room on the side, I'm quite sure you don't want to rotate each element after you place them. So let's try and set our project north. Super easy as well. Just go to manage, position, rotate project north. And now you have three choices or maybe four actually. You can choose to rotate it by a set angle, 90 degrees, 180. But for now, the optimal choice will be aligning that project north direction to align our plane. Let's click on this now and I will select this line there because that's the closest line to the project north version that I want to set. Click it once and if it told us straight away that 98 elements have been rotated. This is one of the crucial reasons why you should do this project north and true north setup at the beginning of your project because here some elements will be actually rotated. If you've been leaving this for too long and you have millions of objects in the models already, some of them may fail to rotate and then it won't be easy or pretty to manually move them back to position. So do this whenever you start a project as soon as possible and you'll be set to go. Let's now do OK to confirm this. And now you see if I set this plan view to show true north, I saw the same direction from before. But if I go to Project North, now it's super easy for me to say draw two walls or two rooms there without having to rotate each one when I draw them. So in terms of XY coordinates and rotation to true north, we are good to go. But let's not forget about elevations. When I select this point there, the X and Y coordinates are correct. But elevation is still at zero and that's not real. There are two ways you can get this elevation and 
set it in your Revit model. One way is to obtain a 3D DWG survey. This one here, as I said before, everything is at zero zero in terms of elevation. So there's no really information on heights of objects you can get from here. The good news is I do have a 3D DWG we can use and I'll show how to set up a Revit model from a 3D survey file later on after this. But for now, let's say you know from maybe your survey sources that this point here, or maybe this point here at the center of your site has a particular elevation. Maybe you know it from a surveyor, maybe you know it from another piece of information. But for now, we can use that to set up our elevation in Revit. So, Firstly, let's go to either a section or an elevation. I have this one ready to go. Let me open it then. As you see, by default, elevations are zero at level zero, and then you have other levels on top. We can now go and select VV to turn on our survey and project base point here as well. Actually, I only need the base point. So it's there, still at elevation zero. I can now maybe go back to here. And before I forget, we need to now disable shape positioning between the CAD file and the Revit model. I'll show you what that means if I now go and save this file. Just call it new project and save it. This window will pop up. You may see it in other occasions as well. Essentially, Revit can see that we're trying to set up a synchronization of coordinates between the CAD file and this Revit model. So now it's asking you if you want to save whatever coordinates you have in this Revit model here back into the DWG. Now I know that sounds just like a good option. You want to keep things in sync, don't you? But most of the time that's actually a trap because if you save it back to the DWG there, it will just go and create a new site location in AutoCAD for you. You know the things that you can see when you go to here and type in UCS man for manager. That's the correct one we have right now, the global coordinates. If you chose in Revit to say, save the coordinates here back into the CAD file, it will just create here another one for you and then it will be confusing. You won't know which one to use. And later down the line, even Revit, when you link this file back into it, it may not know which one to use. It's just a mess. So, I always, when I see this message here, choose to disable shared positioning. We have set up the coordinates. We got what we need from the DWG now. It doesn't make sense to maintain this link for any longer. So, disable it now. And I will also save our file. Now we are safe to go to manage coordinates, specify coordinates at point. And now I can pick on this project base point there and give it the elevation that I knew from my other sources, 005, something like that. By the way, these three boxes, they are all in millimeters. So make sure you use the right unit. Click OK now. And I can see this elevation for this point is now the same value I put in. If I now go back to my south elevation, the elevation here is now correct, but these two levels, they sh still show the previous values. And that's because they are referencing the project datum. In this case, if you go to edit type, that datum is now the elevation base and that's the project base point. Now, as far as Revit is concerned, this level here, for example, is still on the same elevation with this base point. That's why the value for that level elevation is still zero. Likewise, this one is still four meters above this point like before. So there's no changes happening in those values. To change those, we need to make those levels to use the other level head type, which is shared datum. And now they show the values that I wanted because at the moment, they have changed to reference the survey point. You see that? And that point is always at zero, zero and zero in elevation as well. All right, now we're starting to get the benefits of our advanced way to set things up. If I isolate this for a moment, we can go to massing and site. 
property line and to create it by sketching. I'm going to pick a few lines in here. Much easier in this case because it's a simple site. But you can go for as complex of a site as you like. If I go to here and want to pick this one, for example, I can go to highlight one of the segments, press tab, and then pick them all in one go. Anyway, let's stay with our simple site. And I can now click on finish to confirm. All right, let's see what we have created. I can now select the property line and then isolate it. If you want to tag those lines now, just go and load in the tag family. I know mine family is at this location and it's called property line. It's in the default library location for your Autodesk Revit. So see program data, Autodesk, your Revit version, libraries, your locality, annotations, and then CIVO, property line. Having done that, I can now go to annotate, tag by category, and you can see straight away, these properties are now showing up, north, east, and length. So just do it for each of the property line segments. And there we go, looking great. I can, of course, do the same for spot coordinates. So if I go to spot coordinates, all those coordinates you can see for those corner points, they are correct global coordinates that we obtain straight from the survey file. Here we go. Anyway, before I forget, you may also want to change the location for the project. It's under Manage Location. And this is somehow separate from the XYZ coordinates that we have set up already. These are now correct, as I told you before. But if you go to location, it's still now showing that this project is in Boston, even though I knew the OS map was obtained for the UK. So this is an extra step you may want to do. Just go to here, set the default city list, and choose the city for this project. I will choose London, UK. And now that's correct both in terms of coordinates and place name. So if you only have to work with 2D OS maps to set up your project from, then that's in general all you need to know. However, I know a few of you may have the budget for a 3D CAD survey. And if that's the case, your process can be a lot easier. If I go now to open one of the 3D CAD file that I have, this one here, 3D context. This is obviously just an extract from the bigger one, but you can see still you have here 3D objects in AutoCAD that are geolocated just like with the 2D version. The benefits with this is you also have your height information. So if I now go and use the same command like before, ID to check for coordinates, and then pick on maybe this point there. You will see in the cursor and in the command line down here, the Z value is no longer zero. It's now at three meters 97. This is an information we can also use when we set up the project in Revit. So if I go to here, make a new project. This time we go a lot quicker because it's basically the same step as the last section, but this time with a 3D CAD file survey. So I can go to link CAD again, set the 3D context to be linked in, same setup like before, center to center, still the way to go. Let's open it. And now it's 3D. Let's turn on our site location points again. So zero, zero, zero. But if I go here, acquire coordinates, click on the file there. When I select this point here, you can see it's still at zero elevation, but not really the case if I look at an elevation like south and turn on that base point here as well. You see, zero is here, underground. If I place a new level now to be the ground floor of my beauty, and if I place it here, it will get 
the correct geo coordinates in terms of x y and also elevation it's four meters 700 now you may be tempted to reuse this level zero item there and just move it to where your base level of the building will be like this but watch what happens the OS or the 3D CAD files will also move. The reason is when you select it, it's based off the same level zero. So it's a good practice for me to always keep this level zero at the zero elevation and just name it later. So you won't be confused and use it later on for your building. Level one I can keep or not, up to me. Maybe that's a good level to use for the second floor of this building. And now it's just a matter of renaming things to make them consistent with your design. Keep in mind though, you still need to do the other steps just like with the 2D CAD version. And those are drawing site boundary, setting up project north. But at least with a 3D AutoCAD survey, you get that height information accurate from the get-go. At any point from now on, if you want to check coordinates of any point in the project, just go to Manage, Coordinates, and Report Shared Coordinates. So if I want to check this point there, I can see straight away that's the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Or if I want to check the elevation on this plane, click once, that's the elevation there. The same goes for the other model where we built it from the 2D CAD survey. If I go here now, Manage, Coordinates, Report. This corner point, for example, I know where it is in the world now. If I want to turn on Sunlight Analysis, the analysis results should be accurate. So, there you have it. This is the workflow that I have for setting up projects the easy way, based on CAD file information from your surveyor, either in 3D or in 2D format. The best way to remember all this is obviously try to set up a new project yourself following this workflow. So just go and do that. Subscribe to get videos like this every single day. And I'll see you all in our next video.